I... Do we need to sound ch check me because I'm a quiet boy? Well, no, actually, you're surprisingly good. I must have boosted you previously. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Heard you call me quiet boy before. Well, I literally just before you came in, too. But anyways, hello, everybody, and welcome to Monster Prom. I'm keeping all of that in because it's funny. Um, I'm here with Admiral, Big Country, and Citizen 4. And I'm going to make them play a dating sim meets comedy game meets Mario Party with me. Uh... Let's go with a short game at first, and then if you guys like it, we'll do another full game, like, at a later date. Yeah, sounds good. Ah, spooky like the, uh... high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a mild journey to discover who we really were. Okay, so player one, I assume that's going to be me. Sure. Okay, well, I get to be Goop Boy. Name. Oh, hang on. Come on. Custom name. Oh, there we go. Hey, there you go. Hey, hey. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to figure that one out. Big C over here, like, I've played it before. I'm smart. Pronoun he, oh. sure. Okay, player two. You can't be the same guy, so who's player two? Admiral, because he's be the newbie? Two. Okay. Sure. I mean, I was here last, so I suppose I'll get. I'll pick last. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Okay, Admiral, which character are you? Uh, the Frankenstein-looking dude. This guy? All right. Sure. So, zombie. Yeah, also known as Brian, apparently. Oh, okay. So, you, you are Brian, but you're also Admiral. And pronoun, you're okay with he, I imagine. I definitely am. Okay. Uh, Big C? Uh, I'll be Franken-bitch. But uh, but I, I require a custom name. Uh, capital A, uh, ca capital F, R, E, I. Oh yes, please. H. Yes. E. <laughs> I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pronoun yes. she. Yep. Good. Let's go. Oh, nice. That's okay. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Just because I remember, or yeah, I remember him saying he didn't want to play this game. Yeah, it's okay. I'll uh, I'll censor that one because I know I, he's 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 not out yet with his name. Are you? Do you want a he or a she or what for your pronoun sit for? We'll make it. Uh, we'll make it. It's she is fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prompt. So just so you guys know, before we get into it. We're kind of fighting for dates. We can't all date the same person, so don't tell anybody who you're going after. Okay. I remember it clearly. Two weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was cute as she was genocidal. Damien LaVey, 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Scott Howell, also known as Big Country, 21, a wolf, a werewolf athlete who is compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam DeLioncourt, 400 and something, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Polly Geist, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all of the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had two weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had two weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, trademark, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. You, for me, uh, you wish you were raised by a mysterious old man who saved me from the streets in order to raise me as his disciple in the ancient uh, ways of rad DJing. A really progressive marriage between a kick-ass venomous snake and actual fire. I love fire and see no issue with being raised by it. 
or a pack of wild wolves who also happen to be tech moguls who own some of the most profitable companies in Silicon Valley. They would be kick-ass role models and wild wolves. Sick. I like that one. Admiral, same question. Uh, let's go for number three. I wish I could be raised by a pack of mock chickens, but, you know, I'll go for wild wolves. Okay, fry height country. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot I did that already. <laughs> um... Let's be different. I want to be in... Nope. Uh, number one. All right. And four? Just give me whatever's left over in that one. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> so bold, so fun, so wealthy. Okay. A radioactive possum just bit you. What superpower did you get? The superpower of always choosing the right combination of emojis to get the desired reaction from all people. Seducing my loved ones, burning my enemies, settling any arguments, and even conveying complex emotional thoughts. Or... The incredible power of writing fan fiction so compelling the actual creators of the TV shows decide to go with my ideas in crazy ships. Or, uh, probably rabies? I'd go to the hospital immediately. Well, that sounds like me. I'm boring. Admiral? You know, I'll go, uh, number two. Why not? <laughs> uh, I want superpowers of always choosing the right combination of emojis. Okay, and four? Uh, probably rabies. <laughs> rabies, yeah. So charming, so creative, so smart, yeah. If you were an ice cream, which flavor would you be? Double creme de la Guerre and meringue, rainbows and gummy bears, spicy chocolate, no, chocolate on fire, tequila and coke, meat, or success? Uh, none of these sound great to me, so I'm going with success flavor. Admiral? <laughs> I'm all for the meat. Meat. The the character is. <laughs> yeah, meat, ice cream. Fry country? Tequila and Coke! Everybody knew it was going to happen. All right, set four. That one right there to the fire. Yeah, we'll yeah. keep with the fire theme. I was going to say, you're, there's no craft beer option, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we've got some stats that really don't mean too much until the very end. Hmm. Uh, yes and no? All right, so I got nine smarts, five... Oh, okay, I can actually see everybody's. I'm the smartest one! Oof. Technically... That's rough. <laughs> I was going to say, technically, I think the most well-rounded is probably uh, Fry Country. Yeah, bitches. I'm going to the library because I'm smart. That day, you spent some time in the library's PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. You gained two money. <laughs> Later, you, Vera, and Miranda meet to prepare your case for your ruthless rhetoric class. Your scenario for the week, monsters finally rule the world, but puny humans still demand equal rights. How do you deal with such audacity? 14 hour workday, media censorship, start a fictional war. Uh, that sounds like so much work. Can't we just throw money at them? Oh, or cake! I heard if you let them eat cake, they calm down! What about you? Do you have any ideas? You're not one of those group members who just lets everyone else do the work, are you? Relo <laughs> Remember the three R's. Relocation, re-education, reintegration. The problem is they're not happy, so let's repress them into happiness. Well, I mean, considering, you know, residential schools and, you know, that whole... Never mind. Anyways, I'm picking that one. You, <laughs> you propose setting up safe havens for certain model humans where they can enjoy equal rights. But these safe havens are actually propaganda factories designed to show that monsters are naturally better than humans. After that, indoctrinated humans are sent back into the wild to spread the correct idea. Okay, I was joking about the residential school thing, guys. I'll have you that's know. It's scary. <laughs> it's a good plan, okay. but what about the ones that won't buy it? Well, we need to get the food for the safe havens from somewhere, don't we? What the fuck? Miranda's cost-effective thinking convinces Vera, or at least scares her enough to concede. You gain plus two creativity, plus one smarts. You're so smart and strong, much better than those puny humans, right? All right, Admiral, where are you going? You can't go to the library, but you got auditorium, class, outdoors, gym, or the bathrooms. Hey, let's go to the bathrooms. I had Taco Bell. <laughs> Damn it! That day, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give plus zero shits, but you gain plus two boldness. Sounds about right. Later, Sounds right. You, later, you see Scott all but skipping down the corridor, cheerily rattling off some sort of list. Big Country, you have to voice this guy for me. Uh, 
I didn't sign up for that. Hi, pal. Oh, man, today is the best. I was walking out of class, and my tail just started wagging all of a sudden. You know how sometimes your tail starts wagging, and you're not even sure why? Is that like an awkward boner? That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I don't appreciate that. Getting that out of your mind. I started wondering what, what my tail might be so happy about, and I realized it's probably just because I'm a werewolf. Because being a werewolf is just about the best thing, right? I mean, if I wasn't a werewolf, I wouldn't even have a tail to wag. But then I started thinking even more, and I realized where, oh, I don't want to say that. Where everything's would be pretty good. Where every where dolphins, where pigs, where weasels, where, where tanks. tanks. I fucking love it. <laughs> I wonder what the absolute best where creature would be. Where vending machines, where water fountain, where door, where window, where knob, where floor. Okay, now he's just naming things he can see. You'd better jump in. Uh, do you say a were moon or a were werewolf? A were werewolf. A were werewolf? That sounds like the best thing ever. What's better than winning a sports game? Winning two sports games. What's better than gym class? Double gym class. So what could be better than being a werewolf? Being a double werewolf. I wonder if I can get a member of the werewolf pack to bite me so I, a werewolf, can turn into a werewolf. And be a were werewolf. Or two could bite me and I could be a were were werewolf. Oh Jesus. And that happens <laughs> if, <laughs> And what happens if a were were werewolf bites a Oh god, what if what happens if a were werewolf <laughs> bites a were were werewolf? Oh man, this <laughs> is this why they make us learn math? His face in this picture right now is like the greatest. Like because he got his second awkward boner. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Scott's math performance increases dramatically, but only for the next week. You gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity. Alright, Fry Country, where are you going? Oh, Jesus, I do not want to have to do that all over again. Uh, let's go <laughs> to the tree. Uh, tree, so that's outdoors, I guess. You can click the place. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at no point, or but at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself. But who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. Oh, yeah. You're just getting ready to leave when you get a text from Polly. Hey, baby, let's party. How can you refuse such a formal missive? You track her down immediately. Ugh, I have too many females and I already forget their voices. Hey, you got my text. That's good, because I need some help brainstorming. I'm going to a party tonight, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be lame, but that needs to change. See, it's a costume party, you know, where everyone dresses up as their favorite humans. I'm going as a sexy tax attorney. But I'm not even sure the sexiest tax attorney can rescue this party from the depths of lamitude. So, got any ideas to spice things up? Oh, you've got some ideas, and they're the spiciest. Spike the punch with mandrake root, it turns monsters into actual humans? Or, okay, you go as a sexy tax attorney and I'll go as a sexy tax evader. I wanna go as a sexy tax evader. Later that night. Halt, tax evader! Polly cracks her standard issue tax attorney whip, knocking over a stack of solo cups and upturning the punch bowl. You stand accused of violating Article 69 of the tax penal code. The fine is 1,000 human dollars, payable in spankings. You're more than happy to do that at the time for your delinquency. The rest of the party goers get into the spirit and soon they're all confessing to unpaid taxes. Paying for your crimes never felt so good. You gain plus two fun and plus awesome. one charm. I'm pretty sure you just got spanked in front of a party. C4, you got auditorium, class, or gym left. Um, really lacking in the charm. Uh, on. Yeah, you're missing charm and fun right now, which is about normal for you. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Maybe hit the gym. Yeah, I don't know. Like. 
What's in the auditorium? That's got me. It's got me curious. All right. Uh, that day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a, f a figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain plus two creativity. Ah. You go up to the light booth to see how Polly and Damien are doing. Lame. That's how we're doing. If I'd known they'd stick me up here just because I missed auditions, I'd go to that monster truck rally. I still would have gone to that monster truck rally, but I would have gotten in like nine more fights while I was there. Why'd I have to be on so many cool drugs during casting? I thought the lights were butterflies and I just wanted to play with them. That's all in the past now. As long as we're here, I guess we better make the best of it. By fucking with Liam. But he's so hard to mess with. He's like really good at acting. Come on, between the three of us, I'm pretty sure there's something we can do to make him forget his lines. Rewrite his whole pl or the whole play, just not his lines or a rocket launcher. Me, yeah, um, Re you rewrite the whole play, but not Liam's lines, or you use a rocket launcher. Rock, rocket launcher. <laughs> oh yeah, duh. Thanks for reminding me about this rocket launcher I'm always carrying around. Damien fires a rocket at the stage just as Liam makes his entrance. It doesn't kill anybody because all the actors are already undead, but it sure makes them forget their lines. After the show, a talent agent approaches the three of you about starring in a new reality show. It's called Pranked with a Rocket Launcher. Looks like you've got a career ahead of you in show business. You gain t plus two money and plus one fun. Hey, you got right. at least you at least got a fun. Yeah, finally. Okay, everybody, this is in your head. Uh, oh no, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they are. Okay, shut up. Uh, everybody chooses an occupation. Say your choice out loud to the uh, loud to the rest of the players before I click. Uh, welding. YouTuber. Born <laughs> player. You have to pick an That's occupation. That's what I was going to say, man. What'd you guys say? Um, porn star is what I said. Porn star, okay. Go on, set Prostitute. four. Prostitute. Prostitute, okay. Player order is decided based on how weird it would be a slutty costume based on the selected occupation. Start debating now. So we got oh. a slutty YouTuber. Uh, we had a slutty welder, slutty prostitute, and slutty porn star. So I don't think it would be super weird to see the porn star or the prostitute, honestly. What do you guys think? Know. No? So, is it weirder to see a slutty YouTuber or a slutty welder? I don't know. We live welder. in Alberta. We live in Alberta, so slutty welder is very common. Well, you are and, a slutty welder, though. And Yeah, don't, don't talk about it. And then, YouTube... I mean, sorry, OnlyFans just help promote the slutty YouTubers. True. <laughs> There's some slutty streamers out there, for sure. Yeah. Slut. So, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I don't know, I'm still voting slutty welder would probably be the weirdest. Yeah. Just because, like, you yeah. gotta wear clothes so you don't get burned. So yeah. we'll give him first. Second was probably the YouTuber. Yeah. Okay, and then slutty porn star or slutty, uh prostitute toss up man it is i'd say the third would be the uh prostitute because yeah because started. she's got to be out on the street yeah sounds and good to me winter. okay cry country where are you sitting for lunch i want to be sedated no 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 uh sit me down with the cat with the cat okay <laughs> Welcome to my little shop. Buy some shit. I have shit that'll boost your stats, shit that'll lead you into stupid new adventures, even some shit that might be much needed at some very specific moments. So, take a look. Alright, so you got a blanket with two holes, literally yeah. just a white blanket with eye holes in it. I want it. I want it. Give me the... Give me, yep. Okay. And remember, the first rule of shop club, no refunds. Alright, now... Guess I'll sit up here with these two. You arrive at Polly and Vera's table to find them eating. Wait, both of them? Oh my. Er, oh, yum yum. I sure do love food and eating. Look at this food go in me. Hmm, yeah, this, this cafeteria. Sloppy Joe truly has a subtle flavor profile. Finally, you notice the cause of this absurdity. A well-dressed businessman sitting at the, ta uh, at the next table watching both women intently. Oh yeah, I know you like this, baby. My eating is so realistic and erotic. Be cool, Polly. The man wants to pay us for eating in front of him, not screaming about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forget. 
While Vera tries to explain eating to Polly, the businessman shyly approaches you and gives you a small bow. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? I must confess that I have searched far and wide for a suitable con candidate to fulfill my rather unusual fetish. Paying a student at a high school for monsters to eat food... Wait, paying a student at a high school for monsters to eat food while I watch politely from a distance. Jesus. But I find myself unable to choose which of these two beauties to hire. The snake-headed one uh, possesses a certain grace. Yeah, pay me, motherfucker. Pay me to do a thing I was gonna do anyways. But the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want money. This is just fucking weird and I love it. In your opinion, the businessman finishes, which would be the wiser choice on my part? The Gorgon, obviously, look how many mouths she's got on her head, or the ghost for sure, I've never seen someone eat so convincingly. The businessman strokes his chin and nods. Hmm, you have a point, he says. The ghost only has the one mouth. Also, food seems to go right through her. That was my thinking. Is like, is it not just like blopping on the seat or something? Yeah, I've seen Casper. Yeah. The Gorgon, yeah. meanwhile, has countless mouths. Such value. Value's right, Pervo. A thousand in cash up front. You pay for all my meals and uh, you give me your pants. Holy shit, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's getting naked. Vera's able to convince the businessman to pay for a fancy dinner for you and her. It's a little creepy with him watching the two of you, but you get over it. All right, set four. Where are you setting? You got two, uh, three tables to pick from. I'm going to sit... Sit in the bottom right. All right. As usual, Miranda sits before her immaculate array of carefully arranged silverware. Damien, predictably, is examining her biggest knife. So this is the one for killing people, right? What? Good heavens, no. This is the better dagger. Or this is the butter dagger. It would be unseemingly to use it on meat. So what then? Am I supposed to use this scrawny looking knife to kill a dude? No, no, no. If you simply must kill someone mid-meal, it's customary to use the fish knife. This is Merfolk Court silverware, after all. That tiny thing. I may as well wait for my victim to die of old age. That is unusually how it's done in my kingdom, yes. That or poison. This is ridiculous. You. Yo, you there. Which knife would you use to kill a guy? And don't say the fish knife. So say the fish knife or a spoon. What do you need blades to kill people? Say the fish knife. I said not to, but you said, yeah, I'll show you which knife is used for murder. Damien picks up a big scary knife he wanted to use in the first place and lunges at you. You pick up the fish knife. Yes, defend my honor and make sure to hold the knife with the pinky extended. What? How did you disarm me? I'm normally the best at stabbing. Fuck me, I guess this fish knife really is the best for murder after all, huh? One must never doubt a princess in matters of silverware, my dear. Miranda is so impressed with your prowess in combat and silverware, she awards you with her napkin as a token. Alright, Admiral, you got this guy or these two to sit with. Oh, it's all dudes? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this no. might be a really homely chick, you don't know. The, the uh, one that's on the table on the top right is a chick, the purple hair. Is no, that that's a... a no. <laughs> oh, really? This is, this is the guy you Damn fucked it. with with the rocket launcher. Oh! Uh... I guess I'll go for the potentially homely chick in the center. <laughs> You're about to dig into a delicious bowl of beef jerky when you see the wolf pack across the table panting at you. Yo, dog, can we have some of that beefy J you got there? We love the meats and to have them <laughs> that have been jerked. Come on, we'll totally trade you anything from our lunch. You can even have this dead ferret or this half-chewed telephone receiver. Or, meanwhile, one of them is talking. The others just stare at, uh, straight up, eat your beef jerky. You hit their noses with a newspaper, but it's too late. Haha, <laughs> whoops. I guess we got a trade after all, huh? Which of our foods do you want, dog? Uh, how about this black plastic bottle labeled, seriously, don't drink this, it's poison, or nothing, give me my beef jerky back. Give me my beef jerky back. But we already ate it. It's in our stomachs. That's a weak excuse if you ever heard one. You dive into the leader's mouth. Ah, stop rooting around in my stomach. You're too busy rooting around in his stomach to reply, but that seems like a pretty good response on its own. You climb back out of the pack leader's mouth, beef jerky clutch triumphantly in your teeth. And also a lung. So hungry. Your classmates break into a slow cat clap that soon becomes a standing ovation. Sometimes you gotta fight for your right to jerky. You gain plus four boldness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a little fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Just like me. Okay, everybody chooses something bad. Say your choice out loud uh, to the rest of the players before clicking. Shitting yeah. your pants. Whoa. Premature ejaculation. <laughs> Surprise boners. 
<laughs> Dubbing your pinky toe. <laughs> Player orders decides based on how interesting it would be if the selected thing was a key component of a supervillain's plan in a movie. Oh, fucking lord. <laughs> how interesting it would be? Yeah, okay. Oh, god. So what do we got? We got, we got shitting, we... shitting pants, premature ejaculation, unexpected boners, and stubbing your pinky toe. <laughs> I'm leaving it. Awesome. Yeah, you guys, you guys. I mean, I think... Honestly, it might be weak, but the pinky toe thing is a little hard to argue. Because it's like, how how do you how does a super villain incorporate pinky toe stubbing? I don't know. Be like, well, oh, what what's the villain from the Tick? Because I feel like the oh chair face bone. chair face Chip and Oh no. What what what? Oh, I thought you were talking about stubbing your toe, and there's a villain in the tick called Chairface Chippendale. He's literally a well-dressed man with a chair for a head. Anyways, um, I think we'll we'll give it to Admiral, maybe, because shitting your pants is pretty... Is, it, is the villain shitting his pants, or is he, like, capable of making people shit their pants? I think be... either one is an interesting enough topic. <laughs> uh, I don't know. If you get a random boner, like a boner ray, pretty much, like... You could be at, like... Yeah, but only, like, 50% of the population is weak to that. Unless but... it also gives women boners. <laughs> I don't know, guys. We gotta make a decision here. Uh, shitting. Shitting, your pants. <laughs> shitting your pants. Second is... Unexpected boner. Boner. And then premature ejaculation or toe stubbing. Toe stubbing's last. Toe stubbing's last? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking lord. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Admiral, where are you going? The shopkeeper's in, in the gym. But you got full reign this time. I'm gonna go to the library. Alright. That day you spend some time on the library's PCs managing your start kicker. <laughs> Ellie Butt Crush. Fan-fucking-tastic. 420 backers. 18, 9, 9, 20, plunge. I think that's supposed to be 420, maybe. Back that shit. Yeah. You just, uh, deceive a lot of people with sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice. You gain plus 100,000 money, but almost everything goes to cover costs, and you keep only plus two money. Damn. <laughs> Nearby, you can see Scott and the Wolf Pack talking. Scott! Scott! We have the greatest power drink to date. Check this out, bro. Oh, I love power drinks. But wait, this new cutting edge sports supplement is like no other before. There's no need to mix it with the beverage. You can consume it using only your nose. I think we see a lot of that at the casino. Is this cocaine? It's called cocaina. Yeah, cocaina. Whoa, that totally doesn't sound like your regular power drink. Which definitely means it's cutting edge. Just like you said. Yeah, it's like 50% energy drink and 50% protein powder and 100% raw power. God damn it, with these crazy pranks. But before you can do anything, Scott has snorted all the coke. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and he's gone full wolf mode, and now he's basically unleashed and is destroying everything he sees. You need to do something to calm him down, but what? Using your vast knowledge of aromatherapy, give him some lavender-scented cocaine to neutralize the regular-scented cocaine and relax him a bit, or give him a flashy fidget spinner? Oh, the fidget spinner for sure. <laughs> you give Fierce Wolf Scott the fidget spinner. He seems to like it. He tries to spin it, but he's so high on coke that he, that he soon grows tired of spinning it and, sense wants to write, er, and instead wants to write a crime novel. Fifteen minutes and five chapters later, he realizes he could learn Brazilian cuisine. Then he forgets the Pau, Pau de Crejo and was he was preparing in the oven he purchased online because now he's into pottery. And now he's doing all his taxes and your taxes and now he's starting a law firm with a ram and a heart. And now he's ta taken negative two charm and negative one smarts from you and has invested it in the stock market and it's gone. You solved nothing today. Oh, Ooh, brutal. <laughs> Holy shit. I drop stats? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I fucking love that though. That was great. Okay, C4, where are you going? Uh, I'll go to the gym. Check on. 
Shouldn't you be out there trying to romance a classmate or something? Anyway, welcome. So you got, uh, oh, you're too poor for this. I'll just read you the ones you can afford. Some impractical yet kind of funny glasses. Remember when these used to be cool? Now they aren't, but they're so ridiculous that they're still fun in their own twisted way. Uh, a PR agent. Uh, a high school social life is so hard nowadays uh, that hiring a PR agent is totally a thing. Or uh, the gift that keeps on giving. See, I'm wise enough to know when a gift needs given. Yeah. A tampon used by the former palm queen. You know, good old blood rituals or in case you're just a creep with an unhealthy obsession. Don't ask me how I got this. A Russian novel with an insightful approach to universal matters such as love and death. Are you sure about this? You can always use online encyclopedia to get the general idea and still be able to act as if you've read it. A fake badass tattoo. It has flames and a skull and even a knife. With this, you can murder your enemies, go to prison, make everyone your bitch, and then murder them too, and go to some kind of super prison. Street cred plus 9,000. A sexy fake Latin accent. Why? Because the hottest thing is being yourself, honey, but a Latin accent is close second, to be honest. Is that Bob Ross? Yes! What yeah, a motivational poster. Crafting your art requires years of hard work, education from a great mentor, and tons of raw talent. But damn, that sounds exhausting. So let's settle for a motivational poster for now, okay? It says creativity, quote unquote, happy little accidents on it. You have seven money. I want, uh, I want the street cred thing though. Okay. The, yeah, that one. <laughs> all right. I'm always amazed at how people keep coming and buying all that stupid crap. Intriguing. It doesn't really say what, what you got for it, but, you know, maybe it'll come up he later. Old miss. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, he's um, bald. So yeah, I'm... Hover over his head. Huh? Hover over his head? Hover... Stats. Stats, stats. Yeah. Your boldness got boosted up to 12. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, I'm really hurting on the charm, but that's just reality. Uh, I think I'll go to the auditorium and hope. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses, to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyways, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. It seems seven roses equals two creativity points. Sweet, you gain two creativity. Alright, <laughs> fair enough. Later, you're wandering through the halls when you hear a voice from around the corner. Hey, psst. I seem to have accidentally turned a bitch to stone with my gaze. Don't get me wrong, she totally deserved it. Her nose is obviously fake. Plus that nail polish, abominable. But this isn't exactly the first time I've done this, and Principal Giant Spider said if I did it again, I'd get detention. So now you need to dispose of yet another body. And I thought that since you're so attractive and kind and clever, she must be talking about to the guy behind me. You'd be willing to cover up the literal murder I've committed. No questions asked, right? Easy. Uh, we'll just dress her up in some stuff from the theater and set her up in the quad like she's a new art piece. Or never you fear my lovely murderess, my good buddy Mr. Hammer will make short work of the evidence. I'll even give you the nose as a trophy. Eh, I like that one. Not so bold, wham. You raise your hammer to begin smashing, but Vera stops you with a look. It doesn't quite turn you to stone, but close enough. Wait, what are we even doing here? Smashing a defenseless girl with a hammer in the middle of a high school and why? Just so no one will know I murdered her? What's the point of even murdering people if no one knows you can murder people? I've got a reputation to uphold. I can't believe I almost let you destroy the evidence of my totally justifiable homicide. Get out of here with that hammer before I make you eat it. Sigh. Someday you'll get to smash a petrified monster with a hammer. Someday, but not today. Today you lose two charm and one fun. Oof. I was hurting already. Okay, Fry Country. Uh, I want to go... Back to the outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You're casually chatting with Juan the Small Magical Latino Cat. You start telling him that a hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know which one. The one involving the beehive, the blow-up doll of the president, the penguin mask, and the mystery of the Goblin King. Slowly, lots of people start joining to hear the story. By the time you, uh, you say where the Goblin King was, a hundred people or so burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on a mobile app that captures all the laughter and it turns it into plus... Uh, plus two fun. <laughs> you spot Miranda and Scott in the vicinity. It seems like the perfect opportunity to test your new blanket. You wear it as if you were a goofy ghost and approach them with a spooky boo while Miranda is explaining something to Scott. And that's why those treacherous air people are the absolute worst and why most likely t and also most likely tied to the disappearance of Mars Ar Argo. Oh, what's this? A ghost? Perhaps a foreign exchange student? What are you talking about? Oh, gasp! <laughs> I didn't see you there. So ghostly. Sit for, I want you to voice this guy. 
No. <laughs> no, please don't make me. <laughs> Admiral? You guys are joking, right? Oh, that's cool. This is so clearly Fry Country. Clearly just Fry Country wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Jealousy is a powerful drug, Liam. Do not become addicted. Yeah, Liam. You don't see anyone saying, Oh, Liam is really just Fry Country wearing a blanket with eye holes cut in it. Exactly, Liam. Even despite the many times we suspected it was so. What? Oh, sorry, little ghost. We were ignoring you. That's true. Tell us, do you have any cool ghost powers? Oh, yes. Divulge. Divulge. Basic uh, ghost knowledge. Ghost's main power is levitating stuff or ultimate ghost prank haunts somebody into despair. I want to haunt someone, please. You spot a victim for your prank, the coven. You start running in their direction while screaming your best boo to date. Oh, Lord. There's too many females in this game. What's this? Maybe it's a minion of the Queen Helena. Rumors say she's preparing to be a... The big bad of next season. Stop booing at us. It's hard enough to save the world on a daily basis. We don't need people here undermining our morale. Stop booing. This school is unbelievable. Ah! They go running, looking for a place to recover from all the booing and undermining. Whoa, the ghosts clearly... The ghost clearly haunted them, and they have fought against all kinds of evil creatures. Such a powerful ghost. So cool ran at them while booing. I could literally do that. Yet you didn't do it, Liam. Therefore, you're not a ghost. You're just jealous. Big country. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, of this very powerful ghost. Ghost, we respect your ghost powers and we wish you the best on your ghost adventures. You leave, running and booing before they realize how obvious it is that you're just a you with a blanket. Today you gain plus two boldness, plus one smarts. Well then. <laughs>